Um, so this is the question on um, PowerPoint. And it's working out at the talk to overcome friction. So it's an add-on to like we've done in the last couple of weeks, angular motion. So now we've got to consider friction um, that we need to overcome to make a flywheel turn, for example. So there's stuff on Moodle. There's probably stuff I've shared with you on the OneDrive. There's questions you'll have to do on this as well. But here's an example. Um, so, as we know, so we need the torque to overcome friction, which is in PowerPoints. There's something wrong with my mouse today. I don't know what it is. So that's the formula to work out um, friction. Use the coefficient of friction. N is the load and R is the radius. And then um, we know that I times angle acceleration is um, to accelerate the flywheel. That's the torque needed to accelerate the flywheel and that's the torque to overcome friction. So we've done that in the previous things. So this is the new bit. And all it is is the friction coefficient times by the load times by the radius. Add them together and you get the total torque to accelerate the flywheel. So as an example, a flywheel of mass 150, um, diameter 300, rate of gyration K180 is accelerated from rest to 30 RPM in 6 seconds. And the load on the bearings is 7 kN. And the friction coefficient is 0 0.04. So we need to work out the torque needed to accelerate the flywheel, which is going to be this, which is going to be all of that. Um, come on, rubber, all right, rubber nut. I rubber nut. Anyway, and then um, the work done to accelerate to 30 rpm and the power to go to uh, 30 rpm. So first one is going to be torque. So here's my, um, so this is the PowerPoint example, just to make sure you know. That's my mass, there's my diameter, there's my K value. So it starts off at rest, so it's naught, and it goes up to 30 RPM. We don't like RPM, so I've converted it into radians per second, times that by 2 pi over 60, will give you a angular velocity of pi, or 3.14 radians per second. Uh, time is 6 seconds, the load on the bearings is 7 kilonewtons and the friction is 0 0.04. So we need to work out the torque to accelerate the wheel, the work done to go from 0 up to 30 RPM and the power to do that as well. So here's a formula we need, all these formulas, that's, right, so all power worked in over time, work done is torque times angular distance, that's a bit of SUV out there, look, so here's the torque one, so the torque needed is going to be the inertia times by the angular acceleration, plus the friction torque, so if we can work out I, which we can, because we know this formula, if we can work out angular acceleration, which we can, because we know that formula, and if we know the friction, which we do because it's up here. So we can work everything out, add them together, and Bob's your uncle. So I'll do I first, the inertia bit. I equals mk squared, m being the mass, k being the rate of gyration. So m is 150, the k is uh, 180 mil, so 0.18 of a meter. Put that in the calculator, 150 times by. 0.18 squared equals that, 4.86 kilograms per square meter. So that's my inertia done. Uh, the next one is the angular acceleration. So we can use this formula here. So that's very similar to what we've done before. This is final angular velocity. This is starting angular velocity. This is angular acceleration and that's time. So rearrange that formula for angular acceleration, like we've done loads of times. 
So starting, sorry, final takeaway starting overtime. We know it's going up to 30 RPM, which is 3.14. So final is 3.14. It starts off at rest, so that's zero. That's zero. Overtime gives you the angular acceleration. So 3.14. Take away zero, obviously. Divide that by six. Gives you 0.523 and a bit radians per second per second. So that's the angle of acceleration, which means we can work out this part now. We can now do this part because we know I, it's there, and we know the angle of acceleration because it's there. So I times that, 4.86 times this, will give you that part of the equation. That's the torque to accelerate it if we didn't have any friction, but we have 2.542 times by 0.523. Um, what have I done here? Oh, mm. Put the answer in. Um, give me that in. 4.86. 4.86 times by 0.523. So 2.54 newtons per meter is the, that part of the torque equation. So that would be, if there was no friction, that would be the torque required to get the flywheel going, if there was no torque, no friction, but there is. So that is that part of the formula then. Tick. And now we need to add on the friction part. So the friction part is just going to be this, where you, that weird U, what's called mu, right, is going to be... 0.04, N is going to be 7,000, and R is going to be uh, 150, or 0.15. So, we've done that bit there, look, just now, 2.452, we need to find this bit, the friction torque, which is this, so we know mu, or the coefficient of friction is 0.04. The Newton's part is 7,000. And R is 150 mil, which is 0.15 of a meter, because the diameter is there. Look, so we've got 150. So put it in your calculator: 0.04 times by 7,000 times by 0.15 gives me 42. So that's the amount of torque needed to overcome friction. So the total torque is going to be that plus that. So this bit here, I times alpha there, look, is 2.542 from there plus the friction bit. So add them together. So 2.542 plus 42 gives you 44.5. So that's the total torque needed to overcome friction and to accelerate the flywheel up to that speed, 44.542 newtons per meter. So that's the first part done. The second part, the work done to accelerate it up to that speed, whatever the speed was again, so up to 30 RPM. So the work done to go from naught up to 30. So work done um, in a previous, in linear motion, it's force times distance. Similar formula with this. Is torque times angular distance. We know the torque, it's here. So that's your torque here, look, there's your torque, that's your torque there. And we need to find the angular distance. Angular distance, which we don't know, but we know this formula. So this is very similar to S equals UT plus a half AT squared. So this is the how many radians it's gone round. This is the so this is starting angular velocity. That's the time. Half is half. That there's angular acceleration and that's our time. We know it starts from rest, so naught time is six, so we can get rid of that. So all we've got is half times the acceleration times by six squared or the time squared. 
because it is six. It is six, isn't it? Six, yeah. So we can get rid of this bit because it's naught times six, which is naught. So the how many radians it's gone through to get to that speed is going to give us this in a bit times by six squared. 9.4 so to go from up to that speed it's gone around that many radians so the work done is torque times the angular distance so there's our torque which is 44 point let's go a different color 44.542 is the torque and the angular distance is this so multiply them together, that'll give you the work done, how much work you need to put in to accelerate it up. Obviously in joules, so 44.542 times by 9.414 gives you 419 joules. That's how much energy you need. That's the work done. Uh, tick. And the last bit is the power. How much power, so if you had a motor, how much power you've got to put in to accelerate it from 0 up to 30 RPM. Well, we know power is the average power, really. But we know power is work done over time. We've known that for a while. So work done is 419 and the time is 6. So divide all of this, really, by 6 gives you 69.9 so um, 69.9 70 joules per second right it's one way of putting power because it's joules over time or as we always know it watts so 70 watts is the power required to get that thing up to 30 rpm so that's a typical question that you're going to come across in an assignment um, calculating torque to overcome friction working out power and working out work then. So hope that helps a bit. Um, see you later, over and out.